Namaste. So, we're continuing now with Devi Kalotra. And last time, Shiva discussed that basically, if you can't reach enlightenment by this path, then forget about it. <laughs> that you can read so many scriptures, you can do so many pujas, you can get blessings from here and from there, whatever. But if you can't quiet the mind and reach into the silence and identify with Shivam, you're not going to make it because that is the path. That is especially the goal, the end, the top of the path. So then he continues, Therefore, cast aside all fears upon following this path and shed all doubts, giving up attachment or desire for anything. Be ardent in seeking the ultimate knowledge with wholehearted devotion and a clear mind without any trace of confusion. Well, if you could do that, you'd already be enlightened, right? So, first he says, cast aside all fears. What is fear? Ultimately, the fear of death or non-existence. So, if you have gotten to this point on the path, which is the, the union or the joint or the gate or the transition from Vivartavada to Ajatavada, if you've gotten this far on the path, huh, you should have already given up all fears. You should already know that you're not this body and you're not the other bodies as well. <laughs> this is called the food body, Anamaya Kosha. Then there's the Pranamaya Kosha, the energy body, the Manomaya Kosha, the mental body, the Vijnana Maya Kosha, the intelligence body, and the Ananda Maya Kosha, the bliss body. Well, you should know already that you're not any of these bodies. So there's nothing to fear because the most ultimate fear is to lose the body, isn't it? So if you're already past that, well, you're in pretty good shape. <laughs> and shed all doubts. Doubts are from the mind. The mind is a doubt machine. Uh, the mind is always going to come up with some question, some hesitation, some lack of faith, some suspicion, uh, something to uh, halt your progress on the path. To say, wait a minute. <laughs> so, if you have gone beyond the Manomaya Kosha and the Vijnana Maya Kosha, there's no more doubts. There's no more mind to have doubts. You have transcended the source of doubts. Then there's no more doubt. Uh, you know enlightenment is real. You know when you encounter a teaching like this that this is the real thing. There's no doubt whatsoever because you have experienced something in this realm, huh? the high end of Vivartavada and the gateway to Ajatta. So, shed all doubts, giving up attachment or desire for anything. So what is a thing? <laughs> a thing is something separate from ourself, isn't it? There's a difference. There's a duality. So you should already be well aware that there is no duality. That duality is just an appearance. Actually, duality cannot exist because Brahman is one. Brahman is uh, so much a one <laughs> that he's, he's not even keeping score. Oh, I'm one. Because <laughs> there is no two. 
There is no thought of two, no conception, no conception of anything. So giving up attachment and aversion and the idea that this is mine, huh? this is equivalent to becoming a sannyasi, and not a neo-sannyasi, a real sannyasi. Someone who lives unattached, who is not pursuing any material goals and is not considering anything to be mine or I. Huh? Because a thing requires duality. And you know duality is a lie. So those who are qualified for this path are already sannyasis. Whether they wear the outward symbols of sannyas or not, in their hearts they have no attachment, no possessiveness. That's the important thing. Oh, and give up desire. You should also know by now <laughs> that what is coming to you is your destiny. There's no need to desire anything. Everything is already set. Your fate is already sealed, at least for this lifetime. So whatever you do, you're, you're not going to get anything different than what you're already destined to, to receive. And the same thing in a negative way. If something is going to happen, there's no way you can avoid it. No way you can stop it. Because that's your karma. You already set those causes in motion in previous lives. And if you continue to hold on to desires in this life, you simply create more karma for future lives. And you don't want to do that. <laughs> so let go of attachment, let go of desire, let go of possessiveness, and just go with the flow. Accept whatever comes and let go of whatever it has to go. That's the happy life. And be ardent in seeking the ultimate knowledge. Ardent means with your hair on fire. Uh, there's a nice Buddha Sutta about if someone, if someone's hair is on fire, they're going to be very interested in finding some water. And they're not going to delay even a second. So if someone is ardent, it means the only thing in their mind, the only thought, the only desire, the only purpose, the only goal is to attain that enlightenment. Actually, if you are there, if you are in that state, half the battle is already over. Because you're not seeking any other goal. Your mind is one. Your purpose is unified. And you're not going to accept anything else. So go for it. Seeking the ultimate knowledge with wholehearted devotion. Whole heart. That means the heart is not divided. There is no other aim, no other desire, no other need. You would rather die than not attain enlightenment. And a clear mind without any trace of confusion. <laughs> See, these are already very, very high attributes. But they are only prerequisites for this path of Devi Kalotra. Yeah? And what does he say next? Claiming nothing as mine, filled with compassion giving protection to all living beings so that no creature fears you, yearning for liberation, absorbed in yoga, union of jiva and para, fusion of individual self with the universal self. Study this work, Devi Kalotra, and follow wholeheartedly and steadfastly the single path shown therein. So the previous shloka was more about the internal attributes required. This is more about the externals. Huh? Don't be violent. Don't be exploitative. Don't be attached. Huh? 
huh? Be uh, full of compassion, giving all protection to living beings. See, this is the mood of the mother. This is the mood of Devi. Devi, in the first shloka, expresses compassion for all living beings by asking Shiva to give the path to liberation. So this is her mood, that all living beings are my children, they're under my protection, and I can never do anything to hurt them. So in that way, one can live a life of nonviolence, a life of love, huh? and simply give people to the best of your ability the teaching that they need to get to the next step. We've already been over the four views and the different attributes of people in those views and their yoga process and what they need to uh, advance to the next stage. You should know all that already. If you At this point, if you are taking up this teaching, if you're serious about enlightenment, you should already be very familiar with the mechanics of the path, how it all works, and the different needs of and the different processes at the different stages and so on. Then what does he say? Absorbed in yoga. Huh? Not standing on your head. <laughs> Real yoga. Union between the jiva, the living being, and the para, the supreme being. That's yoga. Yoga comes from the Sanskrit word yukt, which means to join together like a cart and a horse. If you're hitching up your, your bull to your, to your wagon or your plow, you would say, yukto, huh? I'm doing it, I'm ho hooking them together. So there's even a shloka like, yoga yukto prasanatma na shochiti na kankshiti. That yoga yukto, one who is joined in yoga, with the Supreme. Prasan Atma, his Atma, his self, is full of happiness, prasad. Huh? It's similar to the word prasad. Blessed, sanctified, calm, pure, peaceful. Huh? Na shochati na kankshati. He never desires to have anything or laments if he doesn't have it. So one who is without desire and lamentation, we can understand, is absorbed in yoga. He has everything. If you have the Supreme, especially Devi, if you have a relationship with her, then you'll have everything. You have no needs, no desires. Study this work and follow wholeheartedly and steadfastly the single path shown herein. There is one path here. There are several different sadhanas, and we'll come to them in due course. But there is really only one path. Oh, and I should mention, before you even think about following this path, you should have already got uh, initiation in the Sri Vidya. You should have your Siddhi Mantra. You should be chanting the 16-syllable mantra, huh? Sodasakai Mantra. And you should be able to make contact with Devi because she is the one who conducts this teaching. She is the energy by which it comes to you. Uh, this happened to me in 1984. I told you this story, but I'll tell it again. I was doing meditation very intensively, like 16 hours a day. And then one day I stopped for lunch, took a break, and had a little tantric experience. And after that, I felt a feminine presence. I couldn't see anything. But I sure could feel her. And then tap, she tapped me on the forehead. My third eye opened. I saw a Brahman in everything. Uh, what bliss. Uh, it's taken me 35 years since that happened to understand it. 
because at the time I didn't have the background, which illustrates a very interesting point, that your realization can go way beyond your knowledge if you have a real teacher and if you're a real disciple and you're following the process with wholehearted enthusiasm. You can realize all kinds of stuff that's beyond your actual understanding. That's the power of Shakti. So you should get initiation. I offered it here. I'll connect you with a, a guru in that line. And you can get your Siddhi Mantra, which is calculated astrologically, just for you. And nobody, well, very few people, there's something like 17,000 combinations of uh, transcendental syllables that can make up this mantra. So you have to get your chart done, and the mantra is made specifically for you. And it's very dangerous to chant somebody else's mantra. As my teacher said, people have been ruined by it. So get you the correct initiation, the Siddhi Mantra, and the, the Shodakshakshara Mantra, and Devi will come to you. Huh? It's like you're rolling out the red carpet. <laughs> and it's much faster. If you're following the rest of the sadhana, huh? it's much faster than silent meditation and all that. That takes a long time. Or it requires some very special circumstances. But if you don't have access to a realized being, the next best thing is the mantra approach. So you get yourself initiated. If you want to follow this teaching, Devi Kalutra. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in some difficult situation. Don't say I didn't warn you. Aum Tat Sat Aum Harihi Aum